So hello and I welcome you to the trading spotlight today on, uh, yeah, it's uh, Friday. It's the 29th of November 2019. My name is Jens Klatt and uh, today we want to have a very, very, um, well, we have a very interesting topic on the agenda, how to develop a trading plan for the next economic crisis. Um, so in fact, I mean, we're, we're talking about the crisis nearly I, somehow it feels like years so five six seven years or something so far no crisis has hit um today we want first of all um get an idea on why there are certain um, um aspects pointing towards a crisis in fact and then if a crisis will hit um, and it's it's in fact it's not a question if but it's only the question when um then we uh, want to have a plan and, and in fact so after especially the financial crisis in 2008 it should have become clear that it's better to have the plan formulated before the crisis hits and not start to formulate it th um, um during the the crisis itself since uh yeah what shall i say i mean um if you're on the fire here uh and and are not prepared, getting emotional, and, and probably see the world falling apart. That sounds really, yeah, it's like like an Armageddon. Uh, I, I don't think that the world will come to an end here. That's definitely a little too much, but still, um, it will probably be um, also from from a, from an um, economic perspective or especially from an economic perspective, uh, difficult to cope with such a situation, um, not only from a trading perspective. So in fact, um, 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 crash respectively, um, market and um, um, environments where volatility hits the markets are very, very erratic in fact. And there's aggressive sell-offs, which are then followed by sharp reversals and then another sharp sell-off. And then you have kind of, a, let's call it a whipsaw structure. Um, and But this is not only interesting from a, 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 a trading perspective but also uh it's also um, the case in my opinion that such an economic crisis if it finally hits uh then it will also affect our daily lives and our our daily jobs potentially and this will definitely uh, yeah take many of our resources which uh which are not available then anymore to formulate a plan respectively formulate especially a trading plan and um um, um yeah trade through this period with uh with uh um or yeah with a clean clean uh, state of mind in fact so let's first of all have a look here at the agenda and what we want to have a look at today so first of all today we want to look at um at the question are we heading towards an economic um crisis are we heading for well this is probably the first thing we're heading to here are we heading towards a recession there's in fact several signs uh, um, which which point exactly to such a development here then surely we want to have a look here uh, on the question how does trading differ in economic booms versus, versus economic busts I think we already had quite um, an, uh, a good or there was a chance to get a good idea on um, what it's different during during um, um, the market developing a sequence of falling highs and falling lows and and dropping over uh, the fourth quarter of 2008. So uh, probably just remember what happened around 12 months ago or 12, 14 months ago after uh, the, the uh, Fed announced to yeah, so to some extent, we can say to remove their 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 put, um, so to remove the Fed put and um, start to reduce the, the the balance sheet, which they extended to over four trillion U.S. dollar after the financial crisis in two thousand and eight, uh, two thousand nine hit, and then they came up with with QE program um, one two three there was operation twist and all this extended the uh, fat balance sheet to over four trillion us dollar and then they started to to reduce this and not only that but also um, um increasing or hiking rates and after they communicated that there will be um, more or that markets should expect more hikes to come, that they're significantly below the so-called neutral um, or neutral level. In fact, it was at the beginning of October. Um, 
I think they were referring to something like 75 to 75 to 100 basis points, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I'm also communicating, Jay Powell, probably someone uh, remembers that, that he said that the reduction of the balance sheet is running on autopilot. Yeah, that resulted in sharper moves in the market, especially on the downside. And uh, the volatility back then, uh, probably some of you remember it, where we're quite, yeah, it was very, very um, erratic. And, and not only that, but market markets, when they uh, reversed, then they reversed quite sharply, even to sell off sharper afterwards. And this is difficult, or it's not only difficult to trade, but that's also completely different to what we're uh, used to over the last 10 years um, in this uptrend we developed where the market Market, um, um, yeah, had a low volatility environment where it drifted higher or the, the moves on the upside weren't aggressively sold off, but the market um, saw a sharp rise and then it consolidated and then continue to to um, to trade higher from there. So there's a difference. Um, and in fact, you have to prepare yourself also from a mental perspective, especially um, to trade during these um, um, bust phases, let's call them. And then, uh, yeah, we want to look at uh, some successful trading strategies for economic crisis. In fact, look at this, especially from a fundamental perspective then, not only intraday, um, um, but also how to prepare your portfolio probably um, when it comes to such a um, um, development here. And then to try to profit also after after the dust has settled here, how to, to prepare yourself then uh, for the potential next economic upturn. And we'll naturally um, see, we want, we will naturally see and economic upturn after after such a bust in fact and uh, yeah then also let's have a look at examples of how these strategies would have applied um, in past crises and uh, so that's it in regards to our agenda before we start um, this is me I, I I will start as usual here um, so my name is Jens I already said this and um, I'm located in Berlin in Germany uh, and this is probably the most important aspect here to mention because Atma Markets, the broker behind this trading spotlight series, um, has offices around the globe here. In fact, in over 20 offices here, um, 20 offices, more than 20 offices in, in, in countries around the, um, uh, around the globe. And one of them is in uh, Germany and it's in Berlin. And uh, it's in fact 20 minutes uh, from, from where I live in, uh, live here. Uh, in fact, so, so I can, if there's some kind of, of trouble with my trading account or something, I could easily um, go to the office and, and, and talk to the guys in, in person. I think this is very important in fact. Um, not only to, to have someone to speak your native language, but also when it comes to um, build, let's call it um, a trust. Yeah. I mean, not, not, let's just call it, but it's trust you have to build to your broker. We are talking about um, um, finance here. We're talking about money. You have to deposit it within your, your broker. You can see uh, first thing to, to, to recognize um, 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 a global player in this fact, but, or someone who's really, uh, who's worth the money, let's say worth a, uh, um, a deposit of 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 your of your um of your money um, is a broker who has to be licensed, and this is the case with Admiral. So they're licensed by the FCA. They're ASIC regulated um, here in regards, especially to Brexit developments. They're also ASIC regulated. So this is the Australian regulatory body, um, and uh, so. All these um, um, or these, these regulatory bodies are on, on and many regulators who are um, here after Admiral Markets. Um, they already show that this is um, uh, yeah a broker to trust or you can trust. In fact, and in addition to that, it's also great to have someone with a with a customer support in your native language. In fact, so for me, um, I mean English is not such a big issue, but nevertheless, having someone to talk German in this case, for example, is great. Um, but that's also true for other languages. Languages. And um, on top of that, there's also the offering here with very, very competitive spreads. So uh, let's also refer to that here. When in Germany, here in Germany, we usually refer to upper markets as the so-called DAX expert or um, yeah. Dex expert, I think it's a very fair way to put it. So Admiral um, has a very competitive offering when it comes to the DAX with a 0.8 point spread in the DAX. And this is this is it um, during the main trading hours. And what's also very interesting, especially for those um, who are short-term oriented traders, scalping approaches, trading scalping approaches. There's also the so-called Admiral Prime offering with um, 0.2 point, uh, point 
two point spread and then you pay a commission on top of that but the narrow spread is very interesting for example for scalping traders so there are several reasons to to um, have a look here at admiralmarkets.com the website uh, to learn more about admiral if you have any questions about um, um, above what's already listed on the website feel free to reach out to them um, ask all your questions they are there for your um, uh, and and for for your questions they are there to help you and yeah so let's start um, Ah, this is a little unfortunate. Ah, no, no worries. Okay. Um, so I thought that, that there would be some some bullet points coming in, but okay, let's 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 go that way. Uh, so are we heading towards a crisis? Um, their first signs can already be seen. Some of you probably recall um, that there was um, uh, there was some some fear, let's say, coming into the markets. That was around end of September. And uh, end of August, um, at the beginning of September, in fact, and uh, there we saw a development, which is usually a first indication when it comes to um, when it comes to to um, expecting a recession here. In fact, so it's uh, the inversion of the two ten year yield curve, uh, which has pointed to a recession in the past. So uh, probably we, we already go here to this to this next slide, and then we go back and then go to the other two points. So um, here you can see this, this inversion. Let's first of all um, uh, give an idea on what's, what, 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 what we're talking about here. So you have um, yields, which should be clear on, on uh, bonds, in fact. So And then you have um, different durations of these bonds. In this case, we're looking at two-year bonds, and we're looking at 10-year bonds and both of them have yields and now the interesting thing is if there's a um, an inversion of this yield curve that means that two-year bonds are paying a higher interest than 10-year bonds so how can that be? Um, it's very, oh, very simple. Okay. Um, so usually it should be clear that the longer you give someone, um, for example, you, you hand out a loan, the more money you should receive on an annual basis for giving out the money. In fact, a bond is nothing more than giving out a loan. So if the US um, is offering a 10-year bond, for example, it means nothing more that you're having, let's say, 10,000 US dollar and you give it to the US and then you say, I receive a payment, a yearly payment um, I'm, I'm on these 10,000 um, here. And the longer I hand you over these 10,000, the higher the interest should be because the longer uh, the duration of this loan, the higher the risk that someone who you, you gave the money to is not capable of paying back the loan. In fact, so that means um, uh, nothing more than usually there should be a higher interest for, on a longer duration than on a shorter duration. So if such an inversion takes place, it's a, in fact special development. So it's not happening very often. As you can see, um, it happened not, uh, happened, happened not very often in the past. So we are going back here. This is um, from, from JP Morgan Asset Management, in fact. So 2018 here, 2019, we are going back till the 1960s. And um, as you can see here, the inversion in the past has only taken place seven times um, before, in fact. And on average, it took 14 months um, from that point onwards that we are then headed to a recession. That means nothing more right now um, it, it means nothing more that Donald Trump is, um, uh, is, is right now facing trouble, let's say. F facing trouble is probably a fair way to put it. And it's a, it's a game he's playing against time, in fact, in the recession. So, so far, um, as you probably have seen over, over the last months, um, it, he's very keen about to, to emphasize over and over again how great the U.S. economy is doing. And I think one of the reasons for his um, success, uh, or also one reason for the, um, for the election of, of, of his person uh, in 2016, has been uh, that so far people are all in all, let's say, um, fine with the economic developments. And um, he can right now also say, I was responsible for these um, developments, even though we all agree, especially when looking at, for example, the performance in the S&P 500, that most of the gains which has been made um, and also all the economic developments after re the recession hit in 2008 2009 uh with the with the um, um uh, uh, fall of, of lehman brothers for example and and the um, um uh, real estate uh, bubble be bursting here in the us um that most of these positive impulses here um have been uh brought on on their way from the fed respectively under the presidency from from obama here in fact and but still he's playing 
he's playing it very smart um, right now. And so far, people are connecting him with this economic upturn and, and then bringing up like, like um, um, for example, um, uh, tax reductions and, and all this. It's, it's, it's right now, it's, it's, he's doing fine from this perspective. The only problem he has is if we are now entering a recession and um, there's an um, economic downturn in the US, then this is also something which will be connected to Trump, probably especially, and this is a point we'll mention a little later, when it comes to uh, imposing tariffs, for example, on China, which have already seen, or which resulted already in an economic downturn, not only in the U.S. and, and, and or let's say slowing economic growth, but also in, in China, for example, but also in emerging markets. So, nevertheless, the thing is. Um, it's not that we see the inversion and then the economy, in this case, the U.S. economy, is um, um, drifting into a recession. That's not the case, but it's in fact 40 months on average it takes till then finally the recession hits. But we have already first signs here, and it's very likely that this will happen again here. Um, but let's now come back to the initial question. In fact, I think I, I haven't answered it yet. So how is it possible that there's an inversion? And what does it mean, in fact? Why is this um, a good indication of a recession? So short-term yields are um, uh, mainly driven by the expectation of market participants here in regards to uh, the interest rate level given by the Fed. So if they give out the interest level, uh, and if, if they decide on the interest rate, um, this is the, uh, uh, the, the, the target rate, let's say, the main, main rate they are looking after. And, it, um, um, and if, they, if they, for example, increase or they decrease, they, they hike or they cut interest rates by 25 basis points, this will um, here most, um, um, mostly affect short-term yields. So if they are hiking rates, that means that short-term yields should rise. The thing is, if 10-year yields then are not rising um, um, here too, that means that market participants in the longer term, from a longer term time, or when we're looking at the longer time frame, they are expecting um, a cooling economy, in fact. So expecting then um, the, the um, hiking cycle rather sooner or later come to an end, um, and probably also not only the hiking circle coming to an end, but probably also there will be a start of then cutting rates, which we already saw, by the way. So um, we, we saw this starting in, in July this year, in fact. So that means that um, while we are expecting short-term yields to rise, long-term yields are expected to stabilize or probably expected to, um, to, 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 to drift lower. And that means then, then there will be a point once these two-year yields will give you a higher yield than the 10-year yields. And this is the first indication on um, uh, market participants expecting a recession. And markets are usually not lying or respectively are, um, um, well, markets tell you um, a very clear picture of what people are expecting because here there's money on the line. So you can say whatever you want. At the end of the day, it's show me where the money is and then I can tell you um, which bet you right have on. Um, and this is exactly the thing. So what we can see here is there's billions of dollars betting on, in fact, long-term yields to drop and the U.S. potentially see slower economic growth in the years to come. Um, and this is exactly what then here is a first a very good indication it has been in the past and it, i'm very sure it will be also in the future which points here to um, an overall recession which is which is um, at the horizon so let's go back here there's also something which um which hasn't been a topic, at least not one year ago, because there, there was this autopilot um, in regards to the um, 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 reduction of the Fed balance sheet. But right now, it's not only that the Fed has cut rates already, and you could probably sell this, let's say, um, to uh, uh, people who are interested in these economic developments. You could sell it to them. As I say, it's an insurance cut. We see economic, an economic downturn probably going hand in hand with those um, um, developments here from a protectionism side, especially nationalism, tariffs being imposed from Donald Trump here, um, which can potentially accelerate an economic downturn because um, we are in a very strongly connected world. It's a global world and we are all doing business with each other. And at the end of the day, um, usually you're interested in um, good 
economic developments in especially the economies of your um, um, trading partners, which means um, the Chinese want the U.S. to do well and the U.S. want the Chinese to do well. The same is true for the Chinese um, wishing the Europe Europeans well, while the Europeans wish the Chinese well, and also the Europeans wish the U.S. well, while the U.S. wish the Europeans well. So in a world, in, in such a deeply connected world in which we're currently living in, um, you, you don't want to impose tariffs, and you don't want to make it overly uh, difficult for your partners to do business. At the end of the day, um, what we aim for is a win-win. So in a world where in, ter tariffs are imposed, um, it's not only that your um, um, provoking to some extent an, an economic downturn in, in the country um, where you, you, you impose or on which you impose tariffs on. Um, but on top of that, it's also that you um, scare, let's say, yeah, I think we can say that you scare away the retail clients, okay, the, the, the customers, because at the end of the day, someone, um, um, someone, a producer, or not necessarily a producer, but someone who's selling a product here, he has to pay a higher price for selling you a good which he has imported from, from, from China. And at the end of the day, he will um, put a high or a price tag on it, which has a higher price on it, which you, at the end of the day, as the customer, as the client, has to pay. You have to pay more, which will naturally result in you saying, okay, then I don't want to buy this or I buy less because um, um, I, I, I can't afford it. For example, because your your um, um, uh, employer is not paying you more, or um, if you're self-employed, then someone is not paying the, the 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 same or higher price to the service you're providing, um, and at the event day you can't afford it. Respectively, you say, okay, I'm. I'm not that motivated because the price is too high. So very simple concept, in fact. And um, so this is also something which is already showing signs of, of an economic downturn. So the uh, Fed right now, the U.S. central bank here, um, um, not only um, waiting to um, um, hike rates further, but also, on the other hand, already starting to cut rates is the first sign that they are anticipating such a development. Respectively, in addition to that, there's something we can see here. It's a US dollar shortage, respectively, thinning out of the repo market. That's short-term liquidity you deliver um, to the market, which led the Fed to announce QE4 they are not referring to it as QE4. So if you listen carefully to what uh, Jay Powell, the Fed chairman said, he says, it's, um, it's, it's something we do to overcome technical issues here in the ripple market. So to get a better idea of what the ripple market is, um, let's um, uh, think about the following. So to imagine you having a company, um, you're, you're doing day-to-day -day business and you have to pay um, invoices, okay? And so therefore you need 100 euros. So you're, let's say you're, um, what are you? Uh, you're a painter. Let's say you're a painter. Um, <clears throat> and therefore, you need to buy um, um, uh, colors to paint walls of your clients, let's say, whatever. So, and um, now you have invoices you have to pay. The only problem is you're, you're running out of, 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 of liquidity right now. So, you need, let's say, 100 euros. So, what you do is um, you go to a bank, and instead of the bank just lending you the money and, and, and you have to pay an interest, the bank says, we want to have you to sell us something um, short term, let's say, something like a truck, not, not necessarily a truck because you need the truck to, to go to work, but um, let's say uh, the, this, this, this color is beautiful, whatever. Um, and, and then they say, okay, we give you 100 euros and therefore we want you to give us, let's say 100 liters of this color here. Um, and at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're selling the color to the bank. The bank is giving you 100 euros for that. You pay the invoices, you do your business, you're getting paid, and then you pay back the, the bank um, where you buying back, you, you buy back, in fact, the color from the bank, okay? So this is how you could imagine such a repo business to take place. Um, why is this noteworthy? Because it has been a big trouble, a big troublemaker during the financial crisis. Um, so for example, during, during Lehman Brothers, no bank really knew um, which troubles the business partner has. Why they said, well, we don't know whether you're still there tomorrow so to another bank, which is usually, um, it's a called interbank market, interbanking market. 
So they weren't lending money anymore. And, and so the short-term liquidity was thinning out. Um, and so what they had to do is uh, they had to increase um, the yield on that. Um, when, when, or they, 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 they said, yeah, you're getting money, but you're only getting the money if you pay us, let's say, 10% overnight or something. So it was an aggressive way to, uh, to co overcome the risks that the other the business partner is probably not there anymore in the uh, the next day okay so this is something which we saw now developing over the last um, uh, um in fact months already because the fed has developed liquidity via their qe programs um in a very aggressive way to markets and and really like um delivering the oil which is necessary to uh, to let's say smear uh the the the, the motor uh, so uh, that it continues to work okay so, and this liquidity is now thinning out, and so they had to restart their QE program to overcome this technical issue or the US dollar shortage, the thinning out of the, of the short-term liquidity market. And um, in fact, what happens, and therefore I've prepared um, um, a picture here, let me just show you that. So this is trading economics, it's a, it's a chart, which is showing here how aggressively right now, the balance sheet from the Fed is ramped up by the Fed here with these, um, uh, with these um, um, yeah, with, with, with how they provide, how aggressively they provide liquidity to markets. So in fact, Right now, um, the uh, balance sheet here is expanding at a faster rate than it, it was during QE1, QE2, or respectively QE3, in fact. So it's, um, it really, it's, it's pointing to trouble because if everything was running smoothly and the market would function in a way how it should function, deliver liquidity to those um, who need the liquidity and at an um, acceptable price, let's say, everything would be fine and there wouldn't be, there, there, there's no need for, in this case, the fat deliver that aggressively liquidity to the system in fact so there's this is a first sign that there's big big trouble um, ahead of us and that that without a central bank in this case the fat the whole system is about to collapse that's simply way simply put it let's let's put it simply in that way and i think that's a fair way to put it in fact still and this is the next chart I, I prepared here. Let's come back to the uh, to the average of, of um, uh, nearly 13, 14 years. Um, uh, uh, sorry, not years, months, um, until a recession hits then. In fact, now you would say, okay, well, it's very simple now. Um, just short the market. That's that's how how we should um, 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 tackle this problem, right? So we are about to see a collapse here, and so we should definitely aggressively short the market. No, that's not a good way to, to put it, or respectively a good strategy, in fact, because what we can see here is the inversion of the yield curve. That's a chart, it's from LPL um, um, Research here. It's from Ryan Detrick. I, I highly recommend following this guy on Twitter, by the way. So it's Ryan Detrick. Um, he is preparing great statistics, and, and what he worked out here is the performance S&P 500 price return from inversion to peak. So for example here, from the first inversion in, in 2006, it happened in January. And then we um, went into recession. Um, afterwards, in 2008, it accelerated and the, um, and the, and the um, um, real estate bubble um, or the subprime um, crisis hit. But we peaked here, in fact, in uh, October, at the 9th of, of October here in 2007. So one and a half year later, um, and we, over this time span, we had a, an, a yield here, which was 22.3%. It was even, um, even, even um, more dramatic here in 2000, and, and in 2000, in fact, in March, when the dot-com bubble burst, um, we already saw the inversion of the yield curve that was in May 2000, uh, I'm sorry, May 1998, um, that was shortly before, by the way, LTCM hit here. Um, so the Russian crisis hit and everything. And, and also here we saw a liquidity shortage in, in bonds especially. And then we had an average, uh, where no, we, we had a return here of nearly 40%. So which means we've seen now the market, um, um, or the, 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 we have seen this inversion of the yield curve. Still, we're performing quite well. So you can also look at the current chart, for example. You see probably something like, let's call it Santa Claus rally or something. Um, it's not a big surprise to get to see this. And it's also true when looking at the center back, in this case, the uh, Fed here, delivering liquidity to the system. So there's, in fact, no real reason right now to be short. In fact, if someone asks me um, how to, um, or wh wh what 
what signs um, he should wait for. The thing is that I say, well, you will see it. It's the same as one year ago, you have seen. Once there, uh, the market broke, in fact, and, 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 and traded aggressively lower, you won't be capable of really shorting the high shorting the high. Well, we will present a strategy here or an idea of how to prepare for especially a real economic downturn, a real recession hitting the market. Um, but still, the thing is that um, you, you will see it. You won't really short the top of the market, but you, you, you will see once uh, the, the mood changes, once the bias is changing and once markets are then hit by the crisis and start to accelerate and there will be a sequence of falling highs and falling lows. Um, in addition to that, it's not only the case that you should be, that you not should look for only shorting the market, but, and there, let's go here. Now we have here the chart again. We want to first of all look at the trading differences between booms uh, and busts. So, during an economic uptrend, respectively during a boom, but let's let's refer probably to to an economic uptrend. So I'm somehow a little skeptical about such strong words like boom bust. It's like let's say economic upturn uh, or uptrend, and let's talk about economic downtrend, and probably a little better. Um, but during these times. Volatility is usually low. That's also something you can see right now. Um, I, will, I will show you a chart how low volatility right now is, respectively how aggressively, especially big speculators, are currently betting um, on volatility to continue to trade lower, in fact, um, which is, by the way, a very, very, very negative sign, in my opinion, especially with all the um, uncertainty right now around the impeachment with Donald Trump, the upcoming U.S. election. Um, I'm not saying we are about to crash right in the next three months, but I think that volatility will will be elevated, let's say, and there will be where we have we have a very high chance that, especially over February, March, probably the start into the start of the year 2020, there's a high chance of of seeing um, the market reversing here aggressively uh, from these aggressive um, um, short positions we have built in the VIX right now, which could cause already some trouble into the start of the year. But first of all, the economic uptrend here, volatility is low, equity markets trend up, and retracements are not really aggressive, in fact. So this may make you nervous, but there are also solid opportunities to enter the trade. The thing is, what I'm referring to here is um, some people really have trouble. For example, right now, I think after this, um, yeah, this drift higher, I think there's um, many people right now being skeptical uh, whether they should really um, um, enter this trade, which or a trend, this this rally on the upside, which is already developing, respectively developed quite far. Um, but during an economic uptrend, especially if you if you're um, entering somewhere at the bottom here and volatility is low, you will see that there is some smaller retracements you could then enter the trade on, even though they are not very, very um, aggressively. So, or aggressive. So it's, it's like, like the market's really drifting higher and, and really low volatility. Everyone is feeling great or let's see, at least feeling good. And, and you can really feel it. You can also see it in the faces of people when, when going to the street. It sounds ridiculous, but it's in fact the case. So if I right now go on the street, I can see already people they are in a very, very destructive mode. I mean, okay, I'm Germany, so Germans are not known to be the most, um, uh, uh, the, the, the most, um, uh, how can I say that? Uh, the most funny guys in the world, let's say. So probably you have met a German uh, on vacation, let's say. Um, we, are, we are not all the same. So I, I, uh, I refer to myself as a very, very funny guy usually. So, but in fact, um, this is probably a bad example. Nevertheless, you can, you can see it. It's, it's like I have the feeling that people are about to, uh, to feel pressure from wherever. Um, probably fam families are putting pressure on them um, um, because they're business is not running well anymore or they lost their jobs because their employers are not doing well anymore whatever you can really you can see it you can you can really feel it and during an economic uptrend this is definitely not the case so everyone is doing great everyone is doing well um, and so no no real need to trouble here during economic downturns then um, things change very dramatically in my opinion so it's not only that you see rising volatility here with the vix the volatility index on the s&p spiking higher but it's also very erratic market behavior sharp up and down swings in market behavior and it's very difficult to say i'm short here 
that's already something I mentioned, since the pullbacks are sometimes so aggressive that they leave you feeling like, are we already done on the downside or are we about to start? So it's in fact, um, like you are, you're in this environment here, you're trading the economic uptrend and you're profiting and then you see the sharp downturn. Um, and, and once the market sees a sharp rise again, what happens is not, or it's, it's, it's quite common that during this phase, you say, okay, it was only, only very sharp reversal driven by whatever, and now we're keeping on trading higher. While then the next sharp downturn occurs, which makes you even more nervous. But now the question is, can I really short the market here? Because now we have already dropped that much from, from the highs and we are very extended on the downside. The same um, did you say here during the economic uptrend when you say we are very extended on the upside, in fact. So it's very, very difficult to only say I'm short. Um, and Usually, especially when, when betting against the trend here, uh, it's also from a mental perspective during an economic uptrend. It's very, very difficult. And once you've seen the market then breaking sharply lower, the rising volatility index here, um, and you see the sharp reversal, you're probably about to say, okay, now I, I, I somehow want to get paid for, for all the pain I've taken during this uptrend here and positioning myself against the trend. Probably this happened quite often here. So it's in fact very, very, um, um, not aggressive, but uh, very difficult to say I'm short and that's it. And so let me just give you an idea on a picture how this, how this looks like. So what, what do we have here is the S&P 500 and we have the VIX here in red. So the S&P 500, this is the uh, black um, um, chart here. In fact, you can see that's, uh, it's, it's from January 2008, so yeah, so 2,700. Oh, these were days. So just just imagine, we we um, pushed over. Um, I think it's 20% or something from from these levels. Look at how extended we look here. So that was shortly, by the way, shortly before we saw this huge rise in volatility in 2008. Um, it was in February, but we want to dig too deep into this topic right now. What I want to make sure is that you understand um, what we're talking about here is look at 2004, 2005 here, for example, the market drifting higher. So this is what I, what I refer to, to, to drift, right? So it's, it's like you see pullbacks, yes, but they're not even close as aggressive as the ones we've seen here during this downturn when Lehman collapsed. And the same is true also for the volatility. So look here. Here. So we are, we were, this is 20. So the, the dotted blo, um, uh, blue line here, in fact, we are right now trading significantly below that level again. So back then we traded around nine. So we are right now above that level. I think we are trading around 11 or something, 11 points, but still we have a position which is more aggressively shorted or the market is, is aggressively short. And in fact, it, we, we haven't seen such an aggressive short position in the VIX ever before. Um, but let's come back here to the, to, the, um, to the structure. So what you see is this, this drift higher um, with volatility trading lower. And then there is the crack in the market and this huge spike here higher in the VIX then in fact. And markets aggressively pushing lower. What you can't really see is the sharp reversals, but it's not uncommon that you see a breakdown of the market of six, 7% if the news which hit the wire are bad enough, like Lehman Brothers just collapsed, who's next or something. Um, and, and then the market reversing something like four or 5% the next day, which, which is likely to affect you, especially if you're leveraged um, within your positions and if you're, if you're trading intraday timeframes. But I think it, it perfectly illustrates also since 2010, 2009, there have been times, for example, here, that was um, in May, the flash crash, some of you recall this probably, May 2010, you have seen higher volatility here in August 2011, that was, I think was the first time when the US got downgraded or something, there are these pullbacks, but especially after the election of Trump and the high volatility uh, here over uh, the 9th of, of November 2016, from there, the market has just traded higher. And um, so let's come here to, to uh, uh, the current situation in volatility. So what we have here, this is the uh, commitment of traders report. So this is the um, um, current state of the volatility index. And what you can see here is the green line. These are the large speculators. They are short over 200,000 contracts. The last time we saw such a sharp rise in volatility, that was in February 2009. So that was shortly before the picture I've just shown you was taken, in fact. And um, so we are right here at a 
point, in fact, where we can say we haven't ever, 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 ever seen the market being that aggressively volatility short, which is a big, big issue right now, because once here, a short squeeze, a short squeeze hits the market and the market environment, let's say it's thin enough. Um, if, if this happens, then there will be sharp spikes in the market. That doesn't mean that this is the, the crack um, in the glass, which will make everything breaking down, but something to keep in mind because uh, these developments here are definitely something to be, to be really scared about, especially when it comes to the next month. So I could really imagine the market to see a sharper spike in volatility here. And this is something which is very important also for short-term traders and leverage traders, in fact, um, because here, these, um, um, or this development, respectively, a sharper spike in volatility could cause, um, yeah, it could, could cause, in fact, big swings also in your PL, which makes a very adequate risk and money management um, um, necessary, in fact, as usual, but nevertheless, probably right now, even more than that. So that's just to, to, uh, to give you the current state of the market. One second, please. I Oh, perfect. <laughs> so now I want to, to show you some uh, strategies here, which are the most successful, respectively, how to prepare your portfolio is probably a better way to put it. Um, so first of all, something you should always remember is cash is king, which means trading with low leverage will bear fruits, especially if volatility hits the markets. This is also true when looking at your overall portfolio. We're not only looking at it from a trading perspective, we are also looking at it from a portfolio perspective. If you have equities in your portfolio, if you're trading dividend strategies, whatever, it's very important to have enough cash available to make sure once the crisis is over, which will rather sooner or later happen here, and this is usually the moment when um, market participants are the most emotional, um, that then you have enough liquidity available to buy the oversold stocks and, and build your, continue to build your portfolio. So that's why, or how you could um, understand, how you should usually understand, cash is king. Um, we also know that long only strategies suffer uh, while diversified portfolios and strategies with short components and volatility long elements can play out their strengths. So why do I refer to this? Um, if the market is right now that aggressively short the volatility uh, index, the VIX, that means that volatility is cheap, which means it's probably not the worst idea to start to buy volatility. Um, probably with the duration of something like nine to 12 months probably, um, which is already covering the time frame um, um, up to the election in, in the US at 2020, in fact. Um, so if you have such a component here, which it, it means nothing more that you're, or buying put options, for example, also an idea, or um, short EDFs, for example. Um, this is definitely something to take into account here and to try uh, or with, with the strategy you're aiming at here or what you're aiming for is to, um, um, to limit the downside potential of your, of your overall portfolio here, respectively have something which covers the losses from the long only strategies or from the dividend titles you might, might have in your, in your portfolio, in fact. Um, also, something I, I, I definitely want to, to recommend, and it's something I, I also have here, like, like this. This is a book. Um, it's from uh, Jim... Rickards, James Ricketts. Um, it's called, once again, The Road to Ruin um, here. I will uh, share the link in the uh, description here below that video. Um, I, I highly recommend reading such a book, uh, not such a book, but this book, in fact, and there's a series of books, which gives you a very good overview. Um, why do I refer to Ricketts here when it comes to gold? It has something to do with the fact that Gold is um, one of the key components within the um, portfolio uh, where the, 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 the assets um, uh, Ricketts is covering, in fact. And um, what we know is that in a low, respectively no yield environment, gold usually performs well. Especially interesting right now, probably. I mean, we are now from the macro cosmos coming down to the micro, micro, micro cosmos. But right now, have a look at gold. Isn't that fascinating? Um, so while dollar JPY is pushing higher and higher and higher, right now, um, 
it seems very, very likely that we are closing the, this trading week above 109. Gold is not trading lower. Usually those two um, markets, gold and dollar JPY, are negatively correlated to each other. So if one rises, the other should drop and the other way around. And this is right now not happening. And that's probably also due to the fact that market participants are right now not really buying this rally. So it's more like you have the feeling when looking at equities especially, this is more like it's algo trading or it's it's more um um it it has it has nothing really to do with um with 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 long-term investing but it's purely speculative here many market participants are probably betting on a on a on a on a trade deal between the us and china whatever drives the market higher it's very interesting to see that gold does not underperform um, that aggressively, which is very, very interesting sign in my opinion. In addition to that, we have also a seasonal bullish window, which is opening from mid-December onwards. So right now, it's not only uh, that gold is interesting, but also long-term when looking and preparing your, your portfolio here for um, for a potential economic downturn. Gold usually performs very, very well. Um, and here again, something I mentioned already, very important, you have to formulate the plan before the crisis hits, which reduces um, reduce all unnecessary costs. Watch out for potential sentiment extremes like newspapers writing, the world is coming to an end, it's all over. This is usually a good time to buy. The other way around is also true. So um, if as long as newspapers are sending the message, uh, we've seen now a dip here. Keep on, um, or it's probably a good time to buy. You shouldn't be, should um, um, hold um, um, uh, or wait, wait for your chance. Not start to buy from here, but we are probably not yet done on the downside, in fact. And um, as long as the media talks about again, uh, um, about short-term corrections, we usually haven't bought them out yet. So that's also something which is a very good indication. You won't buy the low here as, as you won't sell the high, but you're very good um, from a sentiment perspective to wait um, till newspapers start to write the world is coming to an end because they're usually very good contrarian indicators, in fact. So, no, we have to hurry up a little. Um, I've, I just um, had, a, had a quick glance here at, at my watch. So let's sum all this up. So more and more signs are pointing towards an economic crisis, something uh, we, um, for example, can see here with the inversion of two to 10 year US yield curve, which is, um, um, yeah, which, which inverted in September, September? August, September this year, and is fueled by nationalist and protectionist tendencies all over the world, probably especially when looking at the US. So I think that's a fair way to put it. Um, um, and uh, yeah, protectionism can massively be seen by, by imposing tariffs, for example. Um, only going short is not an option since bust phases tend to differ greatly from boom phases. So booms are usually characterized by low volatility, solid uptrends, and it's a drift higher, um, while busts tend to be highly volatile with sharp sell-off and sharp bounces, which are very difficult to withstand, especially from a mental perspective. And to tra trade well during a crash bust, strategies have to be formulated before the crash, especially in relation to a reduction of unnecessary costs, which is also meaning like, let's, what, what is an unnecessary cost? So let's say you're in a very, very comfortable environment right now. You're doing really well as an employee, respectively as an um, um, employer. So your, your business is doing well and you can easily afford to, to go out every every uh, evening and, and have, have dinner with friends, with your, with your wife, with your husband, whatever. Um, um, in a restaurant right now. So this is in fact unnecessary costs. So you could easily stay at home um, and, and yeah, probably um, have, a, have a nice meal together or something. So it, this, is, this is reducing costs at a, at a, at a, at a, at a level which is, uh, which is completely okay, I think, and which gives you the cash is king um, 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 attitude here where you say, okay, now I have cash available to then be capable of buying once um, markets are really um, aggressively oversold and everyone is, is screaming and getting emotional, then you have the cash available to uh, make rational trading decisions in this case or investing decisions um, to put it uh, in a bigger time frame. So, and um, yeah. Again, watch out for potential sentiment extremes in the mainstream media. That's usually a very good way to put it. So if everyone is screaming, that's a good time to buy. While if everyone is like, oh, this is a good opportunity to buy, you should probably um, wait. And uh, yeah, so don't forget to join us next time. So I have to, again, hurry up a little. Um, 
on Monday we have oh no uh, well, well we have Monday we have on Monday we have um, and Paul here and let me just see if I if I have his uh, I'm sorry I, I just don't know I, I'm not getting it it's one thing I can definitely assure you is that Paul is here it's not Marcus I'm sorry this is not right it's Wednesday to enjoy Marcus you can see here I had to change this in fact but I think we're still waiting for, for for Paul's topic if I'm not mistaken but he will be here and he will have something available for you um, and so we can skip this in fact because this has been the topic from from uh, from Marcus so it's the second of December it's, in fact it's Monday okay on Monday at 2 p.m. London time Paul will be here check your inbox for the webinar link and if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to reach out to admiralmarkets.com to register for the webinar. Um, there we have the, the, um, um, the website here. These are the contact details. Hello at admiralmarkets.com for further infos on Admiral as a broker. And um, in addition to that here, the risk disclaimer. And that's it from my end. So all the best. Uh, trade safe. Talk to you again. Um, feel free also to, to reach out to our Traders Yard community. Um, I haven't um, clicked into this right here, but I think most of you guys already know about this. If not, feel free to reach out to Admiral also. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. Talk to you again next week on Friday. I look forward to it. See you and bye-bye.